So, um, hi everyone, and in today's session, we will discuss about uh, data caching. So, let's start without any delay. Oh, you, let me share my screen and we will get started. Okay, so today's topic is uh, data caching. Uh, before we talk about data caching, how it works, uh, first thing is to understand what is data caching and why we use it, when to use it and when not to use it. So data caching is all about bringing data and uh, pin it into the memory. When I say bring data, pin it into memory, uh, I mean you can bring data into a data frame, load data from a source or from file or from table, load data into the data frame and then pin that table into the memory. So it remains in the memory until you want to release it from the memory. So you keep it in the memory, in the Spark uh, executor's memory. That's about data caching. That's what data caching means. You cache the data in the memory. Uh, you can cache data frame. You can cache uh, tables. You can even create a view and cache that view uh, in the memory. And that's what we mean by data caching, right? And next question comes is when to use data caching and when not to use data caching. So uh, the most important and the basic reason for using data caching is to gain some performance benefits. What does it mean? So simple. If you are loading data from disk, bringing it into memory, it remains in the memory. And then if you are using reusing that same data, you want to read it again or access the same data again, you can access it from the memory. You uh, Your Spark engine or you don't have to go back and read it from the disk once again. right? So you read it once, bring it into memory. And then if you are reading it again and you want to do some additional operations on that data again and again, right, all those operations can happen from the memory and they will perform. Uh, you, you will get lightning fast performance. All your IO operations, disk IO and reading and network operations, all those are uh, eliminated. So that's the benefit of using data caching. The next question is when to use it. So there are three reasons when you should use it. And then we have uh, three opposite reasons when you should not use it. So when you should use it. So if you want to reuse the same data frame again and again in your code, in your application, in your uh, data flow, then you have a good use case for caching the data frame or even table. If you are going to reuse the same table again and again or query the same table multiple times, then it's a good use case for caching the data into the memory so that all the subsequent operations on the same data can happen from the memory and you get uh, better performance. Opposite to that is uh, if you are going to use a data frame only once or you are going to access a table only once, just one query or one uh, set of transformations and one action on it, then you don't need to cache the data frame. There is no benefit uh, you are going to get out of it. So do not use data frame caching or table caching uh, if you are going to use a data frame or a table only once. If you are going to uh, use it repeatedly, then you, you should uh, consider caching the data frame. The second reason is uh, you should have enough memory to cache the data. So if you don't have enough memory, even if you try to cache it, uh, Spark won't be able to cache data for you. Or maybe a very small fraction of the data will be cached and it will not give you any meaningful performance benefits. So for caching, make sure you have enough memory to cache the data. Uh, whatever data you want to cache, you should have enough memory. So for example, if you want to cache 5 GB of data or 1 terabyte of data, you should make sure that your uh, uh, application has enough memory allocated to cache the uh, amount of data that you want to cache. If you don't have enough memory, don't cache it because you, you, you are not going to get any benefit out of it. The third is uh, you we cache data when we expect a significant uh, or meaningful performance gains. Uh, if you don't expect a meaningful or a significant uh, performance gains from caching data, then do not cache it. It's unnecessary. So what is the scenario when you won't get significant or meaningful performance gain? Let's assume you have two small uh, data set. You have 5 MB, 10 MB data, it's kind of lookup table. There is no point in caching that. 5 MB, MB 10, 10 MB data set, if you, even if you cache it, that's not going to give you any visible, meaningful performance benefit. Because even if you are reading it 10 times, uh, reading it a small volume of data from this and caching it into memory and then reading it from memory will not give you any uh, significant or noticeable benefit. So we don't bother caching small, small data sets. What we do is we cache the large volumes of data if we want to use it repeatedly and we have enough memory to uh, cache the data. So that's about the basics of data caching. Then the next part is to understand how data caching works. And then there are some associated questions uh, related to data caching that I've listed here. So if you look at uh, the first question, uh, I often get this question asked from students. Spark is an in-memory computing system, right? The Spark 
is advertised to be an in-memory computation engine. So what it means, Spark performs all the operations in the memory. If Spark is already performing all the operations in the memory, then why do we need to specifically or explicitly cache the data into the memory? What is the need? That's an obvious question. So we'll try to understand this uh, answer to that question, why caching data is important, even if Spark is an in-memory computation engine. Everything Spark does is going to happen in the memory. So, But we still need to cache the data for gaining uh, performance benefits. So we'll try to understand that. And then there are some other questions that how do I check if data is cached? So I try to cache the data frame or I try to cache the table. Is there a way I can validate or verify uh, if data is cached or not? Or is there any place where I can go and see what all data sets are cached in my... Uh, uh, application. So we will learn that also. And then next question is, I cached some data. Data is pinned into the memory. Now I'm running some SQL query or I'm running some data from frame transformation on the same data. How do I make sure or how do I check if data is coming from cache or is it again going back to and reading from disk? So how do I verify? How do I see if my queries are taking data from the cache? Right. So we will learn about that also. Uh, and then next question, there are two more questions. We can definitely cache data frame, but can we cache the tables? Can I cache the entire table? Or can I create a view uh, on the table, selecting few columns, applying some filter, a smaller set of the table, and create a view, and can I cache that view? So is that possible? Answer is yes, it is possible. We'll see through a demo. But when you cache a table or when you cache a view, then next obvious question comes in your mind is, what if somebody modified that table? I cache the table or I cache the view. But view is just a runtime query right i cached it it came the amount of data that i wanted to cache it came and pinned into the memory but behind the scene some other session or some other application is modifying the uh, table itself what will happen do i get a stale uh, output or uh, spark will do an automatic detection or it will refresh the cache automatically what will happen so that's the next question so we'll try to understand all this with some uh, examples i'll give you a small demo and uh, we will see all that in action so let me switch back to my uh, Databricks uh, community edition. <clears throat> I've prepared a notebook uh, to give you a demo. Uh, to run this, we will need a cluster. So I already have a running cluster here. So I can run my code. Uh, let me attach my notebook with the cluster. Right. So first step that I want to show you is to create a data frame read some data from the source file. So we have this source file, uh, firecalls.csv. That data is sitting at this location. So what I want to do, I want to read that data and create a data frame. You already learned how to read and create read data and create a data frame. So let me run this cell. And uh, as a result of this, what will happen? Spark will read the data and create a data frame. So what, what Spark is going to do? I hope you already know that. Uh, but let me repeat. In this case, in this example, Spark will go and read this file uh, only first block of this file and uh, try to infer the header information so that it can build a column name, list of columns for this data. And then it will again go and read the same file to infer the schema for all the columns. So when we are reading um, CSV file with these two options, Spark will trigger two jobs. One job will infer the, will read the header from the first block. It will read only one block. The second job uh, will read the in at least one file, one data file, since we are reading only one file, so it will read the entire file, all the partitions of this file. So it will read uh, uh, some data and try to infer the schema for all the columns. That's what Spark is going to do. And if you want to see all that, you can go to Spark uh, UI and you can see all that. So let me go to Spark UI. And uh, this is a Spark UI. I hope you are already familiar with this. We can see there are two jobs. Uh, in the Spark UI, the first tab is Jobs tab. We can see two jobs running here. And let it finish. OK, it's already finished. So what is Spark has? Let me refresh this jobs tab again. So what is Spark has done? It uh, triggered two jobs. The first job was to read one partition and infer the or understand the header. So first partition it will read and take out the header information. And that's why you can see only one task for this job, right? Only one partition it will run. The second job will read the entire file. And uh, there are nine partitions in that file. So you can see nine tasks here. So it will read the entire file and uh, infer the schema for the for all the columns. That's what it has done. And you can see uh, this has completed. Uh, so that's how Spark works. Uh, when you read uh, data, and if you are giving options like uh, infer schema and header and all that, Spark will go read the data and create a data frame. This data frame 
is already created. Try to understand that point. This data frame is already created. We saw that two jobs executed, but nothing is uh, kept in the memory. So if you want to see what is there in the memory, what is uh, cached in the memory or what is uh, what all things are pinned in the memory, you can come to the storage tab. So if you come to the storage tab, you can see everything is zero, right? So nothing is cached in the memory. So what is Spark does, uh, it will read the data, create a data frame and then leave that. So for reading, it will bring everything into the memory. Uh, but once this data frame is created, it's done. It will not keep track of what is there in the memory. Nothing is pinned in the memory. And the garbage collector will uh, um, collect, uh, clean the memory uh, if it is unused. right? So that's the first step. Now, I have already created a data frame. Now let's see what happens if I do some kind of query on that data frame. So this is what I'm doing. right? Some kind of uh, query. It's simple. We are doing group by and then calculating aggregate. Uh, and in the aggregate, we are calculating max and min of the delay. And then we are selecting uh, three columns, zip code, which is my grouping key, max delay, which is my aggregate, min delay, which is my another aggregate. And then I'm adding an action here. So all these three are transformations and this one is an action. So I'm writing and write, I'm using a write action and trying to write the data at this place. So this one will trigger uh, some more, more jobs, right? So let me run this and then we will see what happens. So I executed this action. Uh, along with three transformations on the same file df data frame. And this data frame was already created here, right? So in general, uh, anyone can make some assumption. What is that assumption? Which is wrong assumption as per Spark uh, architecture and the way Spark works. Uh, but uh, that assumption is you may think that this data frame is already created and it should be available in the Spark memory. And then on this data frame, file df, same data frame, when I'm applying all these transformations, and actions, all these four, uh, three transformation and one action should be executed uh, on this file df without need for reading data again, right? Because data frame is already created. And on that data frame, I'm applying all these. So it should not go back and read the um, data once again. But that's not how Spark works. The Spark works action by action. So this is my action, right action, right? So for each action, Spark will go and start backtracking what all do I need to do for this action and do everything, everything from scratch, right? So for this right action, Spark will backtrack. Okay, I need to do select transformation and I need to do aggregate transformation. I need to do group by three transformations I need to apply on the fire DF data frame. But what is fire DF data frame? So it will go and backtrack and look at, okay, for fire DF data frame, I need to read this data from the disk uh, and then create the fire DF data frame and then apply group by aggregate select and then write. And that, that's how the entire operation will complete. So Spark will go read the data again, then apply group by, then aggregate, then select, and then write. All this will happen again. Even if I have already created data frame, Spark will not uh, reuse the same data frame. It will go and recreate the data frame once again. right? And you, you can see that. So how to see that? Uh, if I refresh the storage, nothing is still cached because uh, that's expected. We know Spark will not automatically cache anything. If you want to see what just happened, come to SQL and data frame tab and look for the last query. The uh, This is my uh, code, uh, the last one which I executed, uh, this thing. So look at the execution plan of this, click that and you will see the execution plan. And this is also known as a Spark DAG or directed acyclic graph, uh, which represents execution plan or step-by-step -step execution what Spark has done to achieve this, right? So if you look at this, and in the current version or the in the latest version of Databricks or even in Spark, uh, it, it is from bottom to top. So first operation is at the bottom and last operation is at the top. That's how we read. So first operation is scan CSV. My I executed this one, right? This is the code I executed. This code doesn't have read operation, right? It, it starts from fire DF. A fire DF should have already been created here. Uh, I executed this cell also earlier, but we can see in the execution plan that Spark is, is starting from scan CSV. That means it is going and reading the CSV file. If you expand this, you will see all the details. So number of files read one, rows output, these many, these many rows uh, we got from this one file. Size of file read total, this is the size of the file, so 1085.2 MB, approximately 1 GB. So what is Spark is doing? Spark is, for executing this query, Spark is going back and reading data once again. This entire thing it is doing once again, and that's why we see that scan 
operation here and then it is applying this uh, aggregate and then this is your uh, shuffle operation and then again aggregates aggregate always happens before and after uh, shuffle two times uh, maybe we will cover that in more detail when we uh, dig into data frame internals but uh, this exchange represents a shuffle operation and this hash aggregate before and after uh, we always have two aggregates so whenever we are doing this aggregate uh, group by aggregate it, group by will trigger a shuffle operation and aggregate will uh, will be performed in two parts part one before shuffle part two after shuffle and after that you can see a result query is prepared and then uh, overwrite by expression so this is right operation it is writing that that's what we are doing we are uh, uh, doing aggregate group by aggregate and then we are doing a write so this is what is uh, spark is doing so the point is i wanted to show you that when you use a data frame apply some transformations and finally an action this entire thing along with how this data frame is created this entire thing all that is executed for this action right one action executes the entire chain uh, from the beginning including reading the data once again <clears throat> so what spark will do spark will read the data create a fire df once again once this operation is done then your data is uh, brought into the memory so fire df is created in the memory and once fire df is created in the memory this group by aggregate select and write all this happens from the memory and that's why we call spark is an in memory computation engine because after reading data once everything else until a uh, action is performed in the memory it doesn't uh, go and read data again and again and again no. every it will read once and then perform everything in the memory and that's why we call it uh, in memory action but once that action is complete spark is done it won't keep the fire df in the memory it won't keep it for uh, future use it makes an assumption that you are not going to reuse this fire df once again if you want to reuse then you should explicitly cache it and then only spark will keep the fire df in the memory so what does it mean if i execute a query once again a different query on the same fire df what will happen obvious I, I hope you got the answer spark will execute all this in memory but it will go back tracing for fire df how fire df is created and it will find it here and read the entire data set once again so on the same fire df if i am executing one more query one more set of transformation and action to apply this these transformations and actions spark will go back and read again read it again and you can see that so let me run it once again this guy took 52 seconds right this guy will again take a lot of time because to apply all these spark will go and read the uh, data again and create the fire df once again so let it finish and we will go back into the spark ui and see what is happening or maybe let's refresh it maybe execution plan is already there so it's running this query is running uh, we can see the execution plan itself while it is running this these are gray means these operations are not yet completed but you look at the new plan for the second query right so again we can see scan csv so what does it mean spark is going back and scanning the csv file once again to create the data frame fire df if you expand this you will again see the numbers number of files read one uh, rows output these many size of the file this much right so and this guy is finished but it took 39.44 seconds so in my scenario i want to create one data frame and then apply two queries on that on the same data frame on the same data set so data set is coming from here so i read and create a data frame and i want to apply two queries here both and i saw looking at the execution plan here i saw both the queries are reading the data for itself so we are reading data twice from the disk and that's why these guys are taking time this one this guy is taking 52 seconds this guy is taking 39 seconds uh, and and this is a perfect uh, use case when i would want to cache the data so what i want to do is read the fire df and cache it once it is cached then i run two queries on this and then expect that my queries will come will not go back and read data from disk it will take read data from memory and they will perform fast so let's try that so i'll uncomment this and we will start from the beginning once again right so you come to the storage tab and verify nothing is cached here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to read the data create a data frame and cache that data frame so let me run it so what it will do it will again go read the first block to understand the header information then it will again go read the one file at least one file uh, and infer the schema create a data frame 
that's all data frame creation is done then i'm telling a spark that i want to cache this data frame so the next line is firedf dot cache but cache is a lazy operation so spark will not cache the data frame immediately what it will do uh, firedf is created unfortunately the entire data set is uh, already read but uh, still spark will not cache it spark will simply note it down that i need to cache this uh, so it will not cache it it will cache it later when we run our first action on this data frame so i'll show you that so uh, this is done if you come to storage tab refresh this uh, still you don't see anything here everything is 0000, zero, zero, zero. nothing is cached here so i i know nothing is cached i have executed the cache operation but nothing is cached because a spark uh, uh, data frame cache is a lazy operation so it will not cache it now but now i at least i have told spark that i want to cache this because i am going planning to reuse the same data frame again and again so now let's see what happens if we run these two queries or these two uh, actions or set of operations or set of transformation and one action and then again set of transformation and one action so if we run this what will happen if we run this what will happen so since data frame is not yet cached we just told we want to cache it and cache is lazy operation so when i run my first operation here this guy will go and read data frame once again apply all uh, so this operation how it will happen it will look at the right action okay right action i need to perform right action uh, before that what i need to do i need to apply select aggregate group by on fire df how to create fire df uh, it is defined here so i have to read the fire df here but also i have to cache the fire df so what spark will do first step it will go and read the data frame once again and then cache it and after caching it will apply group by aggregate select and write all these operation will be performed from the memory and then once this is done spark will not remove the fire df from the cache it will keep it in the cache and when i run this next time this time spark will again look at the right operation okay i need to apply right action but what do i need to do before that so i need to apply order by count group by where select uh, on fire df and how to get the fire df uh, it will go back and look here okay this is how i can get the fire df but we already have a fire df in cache so it, i will not do this read from the disk i will take it from the cache so that's how these two operations will happen so since cache is lazy so data will be cached on first action on the data frame and after that if you do second third fourth fifth sixth tenth all the actions on the same data frame will read it from the cache so let's see how it happens and we can see all that in the spark ui so let me run the okay before i run running this uh, let's look at the cache i have executed the spark dot read and cache uh, and i know cache is lazy so as of now nothing is cached but when i run my first operation spark will cache the data and then perform the first operation so this one will still take a lot of time uh, because this operation is going to read data from disk once again then cache it and then apply all these transformations and this action on it so let it finish or maybe i can see that in the execution plan so this this one is still running uh, but we can still see the execution plan so if you look at the start from the bottom you can still see scan csv and if you expand you can still see number of files read one and rows output these many size of files read these uh, this is still partial maybe because it is not finished so let it finish and we will come and see the execution plan once again i don't want to see uh, intermediate results and confuse you so it is still running so the spark is reading data from the disk executing this and then maybe it is applying all these operations after caching it it's going to take at least one minute because last time it took 58 or something so let's wait for it okay this is done took even more time uh, 2.16 minutes maybe it was doing some extra work caching that data that's why it took a little extra time uh, but let's see what happened in the execution plan so you go to spark ui sql data frame look at the most recent uh, execution everything is done so if you look at the scan csv you will see the details number of files one uh, rows output these many size of files oh same 1085.2 mb so for this query i didn't get any benefit of caching data because this was the first time uh, i'm using fire df with an action so first since cache is lazy so it will first time first query will take still take time but if i reuse the same data frame to execute one more uh, set of uh, transformation and action that should be fast because this time spark will not go and read the data from disk once again it will take it from the cache because data is already cached how do i know data is already cached i can come to the storage tab in the spark ui and you can see uh, this is uh, an rdd cached in the uh, spark uh, memory 
uh, nine partitions, 100% data is cached, and in memory size is 451 MB only. On disk size is little higher uh, because it is a CSV file. So it is cached. So now data is there in the memory. I know that. Now if I uh, run it, run a new query on that same data frame, earlier we know it took 39.44 seconds. Let's try it again and see how it performs. Done. 3.92 seconds. So the that's a manifold uh, improvement, right? So this worked faster because file df was already cached in the memory. So think of it as a scenario where you create data frame once and then you apply 10, 15, 20 uh, different transformations and actions on that data frame. Uh, and if data frame is large enough, uh, it is recommended that you cache it so that all the first operation will still take some time, but rest all operations will be fast because they will take it from the take the data from the cache. If you look at the execution plan, you can see what is happening. So this is the last one. Uh, let me look at the execution plan. This is the execution plan. Uh, we start from the bottom and you still see a scan CSV operation step is there. So, but I was expecting that data will come from the uh, memory because this data is already cached. Uh, but if you expand this, you'll see everything is zero, 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 zero. Number of files, everything is zero. Nothing is there. So. What does it mean? So Spark knows that I need to read the CSV, but it is not reading CSV. It is taking data from the memory. And this is what you will see in the execution plan in memory table scan if your data is coming from the cache. If you look at the details, it says these are the number of rows that we got from the cache, right? If you look at the previous plans, uh, look at the previous plans, not this one, uh, even maybe this one. We had a scan and after a scan, it went into the aggregation and uh, shuffle and then uh, second part of aggregation and all that. We don't see that one step uh, which says in memory table scan, right? If you look at the uh, most recent plan, data is coming from cache and that's why your plan is showing that data is coming from in memory table scan and the scan CSV step, everything is zero. It just knows that I need to scan the uh, table from disk, but since it is already in cache, so it will take it from cache and then apply the aggregate and shuffle and then second part of the aggregate. And then we again have some exchange here. So one more shuffle for sorting because we have order by uh, in our query. And then it will prepare the result query. And finally, it will do the right operation. That's what uh, execution plan is showing here. So I hope uh, you, you uh, got answer for these three questions. What Spark is an in-memory computation system. Then why do we need to cache the data if you want to reuse the same data frame again and again? The reason is for each action, Spark is designed to uh, execute everything. Everything is that is required to complete that action, including reading the data from the uh, disk and creating the data frame. So for every action, Spark will go and read the data again, and then rest all the transformations and action will be performed uh, in memory. It will read it only once. But for each action, it will go and read the data again. And that's why if we want to reuse data or a data frame and we want to uh, keep it in the memory, we will have to explicitly tell a Spark that keep it in the memory. And the way to tell is to uh, apply the cache operation. Cache is lazy operation. So uh, it, Spark will not immediately cache the data. It will cache it on the execution of the first query. Second, how to check if data is cached. You can look into the Spark UI, come to the storage tab, and here you will see all the uh, data sets that are cached. We have only one, so you see only one row. If you have cached four or five data sets, you will see all that here. How to check if my cache is used? Uh, that you can look at uh, your query and execution plan. Uh, either you look at the uh, DAG representation of the execution plan, or you look at the textual representation of the execution plan. Every In both the plans, you will see this in-memory table scan. So if you see in-memory table scan, uh, you know data is coming from the cache. These are two ways to represent the execution plan. One is like uh, text-based, and one is your uh, uh, DAG representation, but both represents the execution plan and tells us what Spark is doing behind the scene. So that's all about these things. Uh, next is, uh, next question we wanted to understand is, what uh, can we cache table or can we cache a view? Answer is yes, you can cache table, you can cache view. But then next question is, what happens if uh, cached table or view is modified behind the scene? 